And I'm going to take you through a little trick that I set up today um, to do some troubleshooting and diagnostics on a OPC UA server that's behind a couple of firewalls using um, SSH tunnels. So the purpose for this actually came up when um, uh, we're trying to troubleshoot um, an architecture and setting up a system using um, an IoT Edge gateway, uh, which is communicating and collecting OPC UA information from an OPC UA server running Windows. Um, and I've got my Mac OS over here. There's an Ubuntu server in the middle. There's a Windows machine. We're trying to get all this confirmed, validated that everything is working. And to, to make things more complex, there's a couple of firewalls in the middle, obviously, uh, with the DMZ. And this is uh, complicating things a little bit. Um, we do have access to essentially all of the machines that we see. The IoT Edge has uh, normally has the firewall uh, rules in place in order to allow communication from the particular IP addresses as well as on the particular ports required for that OPC UA communications. Uh, we also have SSH access to the IoT Edge so that we can configure it. We also have a VPN connection into the, the, the company network uh, with RDP access to the particular machine. Simplifying that a little bit, it's not that simple, but approximately that's what we can do. Uh, it's a little bit complex, however, because we can't really validate any of the rules and we can't really validate the communications between the IoT Edge. So I was thinking about this for a little bit and came up with a with an idea. What if we could establish uh, an SSH tunnel to the IoT Edge, uh, which we could then essentially tunnel the OPC UA communications through from our workstation computer. Uh, and this would actually get us a number of things. It would get us a validation of the firewall rules in the, the company, uh, knowing that we are able to communicate with the OPC UA servers in the plant, as well as obviously validating end-to-end -end the OPC UA um, application stack, um, connection, connectivity, and information flow. So that was my thinking, and um, I looked into it. Turns out it's super simple. Um, just need an SSH command uh, with this dash L here to set up a local port uh, tunnel. And um, so obviously I've got the certificate in here, which is used for the, the um, securing the SSH connection. And then I have the local host loopback address in here, which is really to say that no other people on my network will have access to this SSH tunnel. It's just from my, my workstation uh, machine and making that local local port binding on 49320, target host name, which is the Windows machine over here, and 49320, which is obviously the target port that we're, we're aiming at, and, um, and then a gateway username at SSH server gateway FQDN. So that's obviously, you know, however I'm gonna talk to this uh, IoT Edge Linux uh, Ubuntu machine, and um, that should be all we need. And from there, what we'll be able to do is obviously, um, you know, I've got the configuration already uh, up in Kepware using the RDP session, so that's fine. Um, and essentially, once I get connected to the um, to the command line using SSH of the IoT Edge and have those tunnels established, I should be able to use something like uh, this process OPC UA client in order to validate. Um, that I can actually communicate to the OPC UA server and that the IoT Edge is obviously able to get that, that data. So let's have a look at it. Uh, connected via remote desktop to the Windows machine that's running Kepware. And I will just mention briefly that I have configured OPC UA to use um, allow anonymous access because I don't have a particular OPC UA user set up. And if we have a look at um, the OPC UA configuration, you can see here that I have enabled the, the remote endpoint uh, for the binding so that this is accessible from another machine, not just this one. And we're using uh, basic 256, uh, SHA-256 for signing and encrypting the communications. So this is great. I've got my process OPC UA client that's running here. It's connected to the Kepware server, and you can see that these two simulated values for sign two and sign three 
are bringing us some data. Um, so part of this exercise is to test the firewall setup and to ensure that this is all working properly. So let's just have a quick look at this. Uh, if we come into advanced settings for the Windows Defender firewall, we'll see that I've created this, this um, rule essentially allowing the port 49320 here in from private networks. So not public uh, internet but everything that's kind of local office networks, private networks. And so this is working. I know this, I've, I've tested it with my IoT Edge that's, uh, that's working here. So let's just kind of leave this here for the time being and we'll come back to this and let's try and establish that SSH tunnel. So here's the command to essentially make that connection. And when I run it, we can see that I'm just getting connected to the terminal and uh, I'm going to come over here, run a netstat command to see if I've got any ports that are listening for 49320. And we see that we do have a local source, a local host uh, port binding. So um, let's run the process uh, OPC client on my Mac here. This is actually why I'm using the, the process OPC UA client. It's quite nice because it is multi-platform written in Java. So you can get it on Mac, Windows, and Linux. Um, and let's put this in here, localhost. And so let's just try to connect and see what happens. It should auto uh, attempt to establish what form of communications or security it's gonna need to do to authenticate. And here we can see it has detected that it needs to sign in encrypt, basic uh, 256, SHA 256. So we're gonna say okay, and um, it's presenting me with the certificate, which is great. Uh, I can verify that this is the right one and I'm going to uh, accept. So however, it says that the certificate doesn't accept my, uh, the server doesn't accept my certificate. So this is normal, Kepware behavior, right? We're gonna come back over to Kepware and we're gonna have a look at the trusted clients and we see that there's this process OPC UA client that has been essentially received by Kepware, but it's not trusted by default. So we need to trust that. And so now that it has been trusted, maybe we'll be able to connect, but maybe not. So I'm going to accept that. And it gives us a different message here. Uh, it says the URI specified in the application description does not match the URI in the certificate. So um, I walked you through this on purpose. Normally, uh, we have the ability sometimes to ignore the host name or the URI in, in a certificate if the certificates don't match up. In this case, I'm calling from an address does, which doesn't match the certificate. If we, if we come and have a look at the certificate, um, you know, it's going to it's going to tell me this isn't the right one. It's actually this one. Um, it says it right over here. Here's my host name. And basically that's not matching the, the IP that I'm coming in on because I'm coming over the IoT Edge Linux machine. So this is not going to work. Um, Kepware does have the capability to do this in, in the ThingWorks connection. But um, here we can say, you know, trust all certificates, even those that might um, not adhere to this rule, but for the OPC UA interface, it doesn't have that. So um, I'm going to have to back off the security a little bit on this. And, um, and what I'm going to do is essentially come in here and say that I'm going to also accept none insecure communication channel. And I'm going to do that for the local interface as well. So for both of them now, we have none and basic. Obviously, I don't want to leave this like this. Um, but for the time being, it's going to allow me to do what I, uh, my test. I need to restart the runtime for Kepware in order for these new settings to take effect. And you might be asking yourself why I changed the local host interface. Um, and that's just something from my testing that I found it, it didn't work to keep both of those interfaces, both sign in encrypt and none. Uh, operational uh, if I didn't do it on both of them and frankly I would I think it's better to just add none but still the ability to uh, connect encrypted if you do have anything else that's running on these uh, this 
OPC UA server, then it's just a question of restarting the engine and you're not actually downgrading the security for your other client connections. So now other client connections should still be able to be connected and we see that my uh, process uh, client is still communicating over here and I did establish that communication using a secure channel over here. So it's using the sign and encrypt mechanism uh, and encrypted communications but now I want to test on an insecure mechanism, so no encryption. And so I'm just going to hit enter again here to make this connection. Uh, it's asking me for a certificate. I don't really want a certificate. So I'm going to cancel this or accept it, right? Uh, but I want to come in here to essentially, um, I want to be able to change this. Maybe we'll restart the client. I basically want to be able to say that I don't want to use security when I make that connection. Okay, so here I'm getting the option uh, to choose. Should be able to say okay, right, bingo. Okay, so now we're in without security. I can do the, the browsing on... Um, on my OPC UA server. I can find those values here. Sign two monitor, sign three. Get our little graph to come up. Okay, so we are getting values. Um, kind of interesting. I frankly think this is great. A great way to troubleshoot. We see the data is coming in and now, now that I do know that it's working, I can also try to back off on some stuff. So I'm gonna, just for um, the, the example, I'm going to disable this OPC UA um, firewall rule just to see if it's actually allowing our traffic through or not. And when we come back to my remote machine, we see that effectively we did just drop the, uh, the communication, the connection. And uh, however, the local one is still pulling things in. So let's enable that allow rule again and come back to here and see what happens. And it picked it up right away. So a uh, little simple little trick, um, but it can obviously simplify your life if you're trying to uh, confirm that the OPC UA communications are working uh, across varying devices. You know, one other thing that we'll try actually is um, right here. I am on this IoT Edge device and you can use Telnet to um, OPC UA. So these two machines are on the same network, 49320, and Telnet is just going to open up a port to that particular machine. And it, this works in this case, uh, and this is a test that we did in the, in the particular case that I'm dealing with right now, and this test is failing. So this is a certain level of test. It's going to establish the, the channels open, if we can open the port. But this test that I've showed you was essentially, obviously, it's actually using the OPC UA protocol, and it's really validating the entire, the entire network connection.